guys. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, so one thing I've uh, been meaning to address on this bike is the voltmeter. Um, I actually have no physical way of telling what this, the resting voltage is on this bike because of the way it's designed, which I will show you. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the display on it, but uh, it does have its issues. Uh, how they get it to go in color like that is basically it's just the film over top of it. And instead of using a backlight that's uh, red or, uh, or uh, blue, they use a white light. So, and if you could peel the front of the LCD off and that color would still be there. But my issue is with the, um, the voltmeter. Basically, it's just a bar. Okay? It doesn't have increments of what voltage it's dropping to. And another issue it has is um, when you're riding, as soon as you're like 10 minutes into the ride and you get a little bit of sag, which is normal on the battery, uh, when you give it gas, when it pulls more amps from the dead uh, standstill, this will drop and then come back up. So it's, it's, it's totally unreliable. Um, I actually ha have a display that I can plug in there. The only difference is it's not uh, color, obviously. But uh, it, it gives you the proper volts and uh, whatnot. It's got the same turn signals, uh, high beams. Uh, it might not have the kilometers. It, it this one calculates all the kilometers when you're riding. Um, but uh, I want to see if I can also change that to miles per hour. Like it just goes to 59 and it just buries itself. It doesn't uh, go any higher. So it's kind of useless to me. Now, if I can calibrate it with the pot in the back, which I'm sure there is one, that would be cool because then I could just basically use uh, GPS and um, calibrate it that way. It'll say kilometers, but uh, it'll be calibrated for miles. So what we're going to do is take this bearing off, take the, base, the bottom of this uh, container off and see if we can't just drop that out. I have one here that I'll show you. Yeah, I actually have two of them. This one here might take a little bit more work because I've uh, removed some of the wiring harness. But I know that one works. Uh, this one was from my previous bike. And you can see the pot there for adjusting the um, speed. No scratches or anything in it. And uh, it should plug directly into it. And uh, it will give us a better reading on the, the volts and whatnot. But uh, we'll have to see. Let's get that one open and uh, see what it looks like. This one looks like when it's off. And the connector actually is different, but it's got the same number of pins, pretty much. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Speedo and uh, see what type of display it has. It's interesting to note that uh, even this container here is universal. As you can see, all where they, all the, they would use this on their... Um, uh, Grom clone, as you can see, it's got the punch out for LED lights and everything else. It's hilarious how they uh, pretty much make one product and uh, use it for many different sources. So, uh, from what I can see inside there, the, the board looks just about the same. So, show the ignition there. But the plug is different, so we'll see how, how this goes. One thing, it's sealed in here pretty good. I'm 
Now they went through all this trouble. What are the chances of them putting a rubber seal in between this and this? Yes or no? Probably not. Well, at least we can get rid of the rest of the plastic out. Uh, wow, didn't even put a rubber seal in there. Nope, it's just plastic against plastic, and it's not even soft plastic, so that's hilarious. It will leak. Just shows you how much, uh, how they build these things. And there you go. It's basically the same display. It's just they, they changed the wiring harness on it. Yeah, pretty much. Even the wires are in the same spot, pretty much. And instead of using black, they used green. But the orange, there's that one there. And purple, black. Oh my god, orange, blue, yeah, the colors are all the same for these these three here. Yeah, so the wiring harness is pretty much the same. The only thing I've done is they've changed the connectors from a uh, 6 to a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, there's six pins there, it's just a different type of connector. Hmm. Cool, so I just had to uh, basically pull the pins out of this one and pull the pins out of this one and then put the pins in the same order as what we got here which sh shouldn't be too hard yeah cool all right we'll get to it okay one thing i did find is these wiring harnesses are exactly the same only difference is this one uses a black wire, where this one uses a green. Um, well, obviously, the, the red's a different color, but uh, the, it's, uh, the labels on both boards are exactly the same. So what I'm going to do, instead of taking the connectors apart, which would be stupid because basically it's a lot more work, I'm just going to do solder all the wires, and then solder all the wires from the other wiring harness onto this one, and then we'll be done. So you can see it's a little bit lighter. Uh, they, they're not using the dark mask on the, um, the display to um, make it stand out more. I don't really care. I want the voltmeter, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, yeah, so we'll just heat up the soldering iron and start transferring the wires, and we'll uh, plug it into the wire harness and uh, see how it looks. Hopefully, it's uh, it'll give us a voltmeter. Uh, the easier way to do this, instead of just removing all of them and uh, running into issues, is we'll just do two at a time. Uh, these two here for power is D plus and D negative. So we'll just uh, give me a second. I'm going to put some tape over this so I don't scratch it up. Okay, we should be good now. Just don't want to scratch it up in case I do end up putting it back on for whatever reason. Um, they don't look good when they get scratched up. So I'm going to put the positive on the positive. Oops, that's it. Melt the plastic. Not that it seals very good anyway. We're done. Now we're going to do the this one here, which is black on this one. The other one is purple.
while they're using hot glue. Doesn't help. These ones here are for like turn signals and high beam. These ones aren't that important really. And then you've got this purple one here that's for the temp, which you could put right to your hub motor really, if you want to uh, monitor the temp off your uh, motor. If it's over voltage. <laughs> In chant, wink, wink. Okay, this blue here. I know this looks a little confusing, but this way you don't uh, make a mistake. Like I could just, I could have just quickly de uh, desoldered all of it. And, uh, then you have to take pictures because you would screw up. And Blue goes to blue, orange goes to orange. Make it much easier than that. It's the beauty thing of them keeping all these parts the same, really. The only thing that's different is the connector. I gotta love them for that. Just about done. It's pretty painless. Just quick plug it in and give it a quick test, and hopefully there's no smoke. This is from a 72 volt bike, so I don't see there being a problem. Like I said, the only thing that sees the extra voltage on the bike is um, the, the controller. And that's why we're going to be adding another voltmeter. But anyway, there's the display, the original one. It's out. It can be put away, and there is the one ready to go. Only thing we have to do is pull the temp gauge out, which just sits in the in the dash anyway. I mean, we can set it up like that with the clip, like it originally was. They get better uh, better temps on the outside air when it's hanging out the bike versus inside the container. Anyway, let's plug it in. Well, was it worth it? Um, yeah, actually, it was. Um, it's not as pretty as the other one, but at least this one gives you a uh, better idea of what you've got remaining and everything else, as you can see. As you can see, it comes with the power bar there, if I want it, but it gives me full pack voltage, which is 78.5. Still got the kilometers on it, and uh, everything else is working. So, oh, let me try turn signals, make sure they work. Yeah. Are working. So that pretty much everything is going to work the way it did before. High beams, yeah. No problem. And for the angle that I look at it, like from here, you really can't see it, but the way it's mounted, it's uh, nice and dark. So it's, it's perfect. I love it. Good mod. Let's get it back together. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm actually happier if I didn't, uh, I'm <laughs> seriously considering leaving that, uh, that fairing off. I really don't like the looks of it anyway. But anyway, uh, as you can see, it's a perfect angle. It's nice and bright. I mean, you can make that out using the sunlight, so I'm more than happy with that. Later, guys. Hey, before I go, guys, I just wanted to show you how cheap these, uh, these, some of these bikes are. Look at this, there's rust, pitted rust marks all over the fairing um, holder. So it's not going to be going back on anytime soon. And I'll show you the headlight. Because the way the fairing is set on these bikes is the headlight overlaps, or the fairing overlaps the headlight. And it's, there's so, it's so close to the headlight that um, any dirt that falls in here, and when it vibrates, it... Uh, scratched up the uh, lens pretty good so I recommend removing it besides it gives it more of a sort of like a grob look anyway so, later guys